Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs that sell. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I have another five bonus niches for you. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this design right here using Canva's clipping mask app. Now I know I usually show you guys clipping masks using photo P and that is my preferred method still for most clipping masks. Um, but I am going to show you how you can use Canva's app to do it all on Canva um, and kind of show you a little bit about the differences. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to Canva, show you guys how I made this design here. So right now I'm on Canva's homepage and we're just going to go ahead and start with a blank design. So I'm going to go to the top where it says custom size. I'll click that. We're going to start with 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is the standard size that I use for t-shirt designs. And it will ensure that when I print it, it prints at above a 300 DPI. Now I do like to optimize my designs for the darker colors as those do tend to sell best in t-shirts. So I'm just going to go ahead and select black as my background color. Now for this design, the first thing we're going to do is create the design that we want to put the clipping mask on. And so I'm going to do a really simple design here. I showed you guys a little tribal design that just had a, like a tribal turtle and a tribal like um, stingray. So we'll go over to the left hand side where it says elements. I'm going to click there and I'm just going to start with a tribal turtle. And there's always tons of tribal turtles that you can use. So really we can pick just about anyone we want. And you can see there are a bunch. I don't know exactly which one I picked. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick one of the ones like right at the beginning. I'll just go ahead and pick the very first one I see. So here's that first one I got. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the background color here to white so that I can see it. And then I'm going to go back over to elements. Now, when I clicked it, by the way, if I go back to see all, oops, well, that's my recently used, but when I go back to my tribal turtle and I go back to see all, and I clicked on this first one here, it pulled up magic recommendations. Now this is great because it's going to show me other similar tribal animals. So I can hit see all, I'm going to move that one out of the way there. And this is where I found some of um, the other things that I wanted to use. So whether you want to put a seahorse or a dolphin or a sailfish or whatever. I was looking for the stingray specifically. Here's a stingray that's kind of cool. That's a different one. So there's a lot of different tribal animals here that we can use in the design. Obviously I had had some sort of a stingray. It's not that one. So I'm not quite sure where the one that I picked was, but it doesn't have to be a stingray. I could go with a shark or something like that. And sometimes that'll pick up more magic recommendations. And then I can look through again, even more and see if there's anything else that kind of looks good. I mean, there's that stingray. That's not necessarily the one I wanted. I don't know where the one I wanted was. I can always go ahead and just search for a uh, tribal stingray and see if that comes up. Wow, there's the one I liked. So that's the one I actually used in the design I showed you. So if I was going to take that one, go ahead again, make that white. So now I've got my turtle and my stingray. So that's what I actually used in the design. And I liked them oops, so because they kind of fit together cool. So I could just sort of angle that a little bit and just kind of make up. So I thought that they fit together nicely, something like that. And I can go ahead then and just group those together so that they're sort of one design there. And then what I did is I put some circular text around here too. So I went ahead, um, hit T on my keyboard. That's going to pull up a text box. And so I'm going to have one text box at the top. I'm going to hit control D. That'll just pull up another text box. So now I've got my two text boxes and you can use anything you want for text. I decided that I'm making a tropical shirt. I'm going to do it as more of a location style design because vacation shirts can be very popular. So sometimes if we just pick specific locations, so I'm going to go with some Caribbean islands here. And I decided to go with Antigua and um, Barbuda, I think it is. So, and I guess I'm going to do this in caps, Antigua, Antigua and Barbuda, oops, Antigua and Barbuda, All right? And then I wanted to pick um, a font that I thought was going to look good with this. Now, because this is a cool tribal design, I decided to go with a tribal style font. 
Now for this one, I did use a font that I got off of Creative Fabrica. So if you haven't gotten any fonts off Creative Fabrica, it's super convenient and I've gotten a ton of free ones off of there. I'm gonna show you real quick if I jump over to Creative Fabrica super fast. The one that I used for this is one called Tribal Case. So it's this one right here. I hit Tribal Case and I've already downloaded it, but you could just go ahead and hit download and that's gonna download that font for you. Um, and then from there, you would just go ahead and go right back over to your design right here. I'm going to go to the font section. Now, I already have this font, but if you didn't, you would go down to where it says upload a font. So you click that, and that is where you could go ahead and upload the font. Now, right now, it's not showing because it's in a zip file when it downloads. Hold on, let me show you guys. So if I go to my downloads, I would have to click on that. It's in the zip file. I'm going to take it, and then I pull that into my downloads. Now it'll be on the download. So now if I wanted to upload it, I could again go to fonts go down to upload a font. It should pull up right there. I can hit tribal case, hit open. It's gonna make you confirm that you've got access to use it. Hit yes, upload away. It will upload it. I've already got it on here, so it's gonna say the same. Um, so I'll just hit upload selected so you guys can see. And it will go ahead and upload it. And then you would find it down here in the your fonts section, which should be right at the top. So all of these fonts that you see in my my fonts section, these are all ones I got from Creative Fabrica. And most of them were free fonts. Um, so Creative Fabrica does have a ton of free fonts. But if you actually, you know, wanted a font that wasn't free, you can always, of course, um, whatever, get, get their pro version or their membership, and it's pretty cheap. Otherwise, if you just go over to freebies here on the top, you can go to freebies, there's free fonts, free SVGs, free graphics, you can go to free fonts, and you can see that there are just tons of free fonts, so over 5,000 free fonts that you could get. Um, and so it'd be super easy to just download those and upload them onto Canva and use them whenever you wanted to. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that really quick because I am going to use this tribal font here. And I wanted you guys to know where I got it. <laughs> so there's the tribal font. I thought it looked really cool um, with this design. Again, I'm going to make it kind of big. Maybe not that big. Eh, something there. Something there, just so you guys can see it. And then what I was going to do was going to make it round. Um, the easiest way to do this, by the way, would be to hit C on the keyboard. That's going to pull up a circle. I'm going to go ahead and make that circle pretty transparent so that I can see through it okay. It's just here to kind of give me the shape that I want. So if I had this circle and I was centering it in the page, maybe there, I'm going to take these and we're going to kind of line them up with the circle. So what I'm going to do is go to effects. I'm going to go down to shape. We're going to hit curve. And then I can adjust the curve to kind of match the circle. So depending on how tight I want it to be. So if I wanted it to be something like that, I would want to curve it so that it more or less matches the circle here. And so right now that's at a 76. I can, you know, open it up a little bit or I can close it down a little bit. So 77. And so something like that. So that's a 77. So if I was to take this one here and again, do the same things, I could go to effects. I could do curve. I'm going to curve it in the other direction. That's a negative 77 right there. So it should be about the same. And if I put it here, you can see how that would look. Now, I like the way that that all looks. It looks kind of cool. Um, I can always, from this point, if I wanted to, now that I've got that, that circle, I could angle this whole thing, which might be cool, or angle, um, you know, the graphic in the middle. So I can take my circle out and I could take these, I could move them over a little bit if I wanted to, um, or I could angle it a little bit if I wanted to. So I could take the whole thing and kind of angle maybe a little bit more like that might look kind of cool. Um, and once I do that, I can then go ahead and you know, angle the, the, the fonts more too, so I can take the whole design and rotate it. So any number of different things that I could potentially, you know, do with this, maybe not that much, maybe a little bit like that. Anyways, once I have my basic frame, all I'm going to do is we're going to download the frame.
now I added another page there, but let's go ahead. I'm just going to title this Antigua frame and we're going to go ahead, hit share, download. This is a transparent background. Okay. Um, we just want page one. Okay. It's a PNG. Everything should look good. We will download that. So this is going to be what's essentially going to be our frame. So this is a little bit different than what I do with photo P when we use the app on Canva. So the next thing we're going to do is find our mask. Now you can do anything you want with a mask. Usually I like to do a nice gradient. I think I put like teal gradient background. So if I do a teal gradient background here, there's all sorts of different ones, different colors. I want it to be something that's, you know, relatively light that's going to show up on a dark background. So any of these, you know, could look pretty cool. If I wanted to do something like that, just get a little bit of a gradient. If I wanted it to be something maybe a little bit more of a gradient or a little bit more texture, obviously I can come and, you know, look at some of these other ones here that kind of look cool. So lots of different fun, you know, gradient tealish backgrounds. So pick whatever you want, really doesn't matter. So for the sake of this, let's just pick a nice light, bright one. What do I got? Maybe I'll just go back to, I'll just go back to this one is fine because um, it's nice and light and bright. So let's say there is what I want my mask to be. Now, if I was doing this on photo P, I would then go ahead and download my mask. And then I would jump over to photo P and put the mask right on top of the frame. And that's how I would do it in photo P in Canva. We're going to have to use the app. So what we would do would be go to the left hand side. We will scroll all the way down to where it says apps. And you can search through the apps. Um, I have it saved under my apps, so I can just go to my apps. Anything that you've used will be under your apps, but if you wanted to search for it, you could just go ahead and put clipping mask and it's gonna pull up a clipping mask right here. So this is the clipping mask app. So you can click on that. Now this works a little bit differently. So what you would wanna do is you're going to start by selecting the mask. So you pick your mask, we're gonna select the mask. So I click on that and then I'm gonna put start masking. When you do that, it's going to pull up different shapes. And so what essentially you could do would be just to pick a plain, simple, boring shape and you would put your your mask on the, the boring shape. But we want to do obviously our own design. So here, what we're actually going to do is go to image and we're going to go to choose file and we're going to upload our frame here. So I'm going to click that. It's going to pull up my downloads. I'm going to go ahead and go with my Antigua frame and hit open and it's gonna put my frame right there. Once I have my frame on there, I can go ahead and make it nice and big. I want it to cover most of the mask because I do wanna make sure I'm getting all the different gradients. And so you might have to move it around to get it bigger because it's only gonna show the corners while it's in there. So it's a little funky. So let's say I do that. That is now going to go right over there. I'm gonna hit add to design give it a second. And what it's done, as you can't necessarily see it, is it's added this to the design. So it's gone ahead and put it right here. So now here I've got my Antigua and Barbuda. And so that is how you would do it using the, um, the app on Canva. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different order, but once you get used to it, it's okay. Now I can take this because now it's just one graphic. And let's say I wanted to angle it in the page. I maybe wanted to center it, make it a lot bigger. So I have it something, something like that maybe looks kind of cool. Um, I can also, because now it's just a graphic, I can go to edit and I can use any of the filters on it or adjust it. So if I wanted it to be maybe a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant, something like that, I could do it that way too. So you could play with it now from there. So that looks pretty cool. Um, it's pretty much ready to go up. So now Antigua Turtle. So now I can just title it. I can go to share, download. It's a transparent background. It's a PNG. This time I only want page two and I can hit download. And so now it would be ready to put up on anything you wanted to, whether it's a shirt or a pillow or a tote bag or anything else. And so that is how you would go ahead and use the clipping mask um, 
in in Canva. Now, this only works, by the way, if you're using pretty much one mask over one design. So if I had wanted to do this and have a different clipping mask, maybe over Antigua and a different clipping mask over Barbuda and a different clipping mask here, or if I was doing the brush stroke frames where I have a different clipping mask in each of the four brush strokes, it wouldn't really work because it really just puts one mask over one frame. So if I wanted to do the brush stroke things, I would have to have four separate frames, each with one brush stroke, and then do the masking for each one of those individually versus what I showed you guys before using Photopea, which was just to line up all the masks on one page, download it all as just one mask and put it over the one frame. And so um, you can decide based on whatever design you're doing, whether it makes more sense to use Canvas Clipping Mask app if it's something like this, or whether it makes more sense to just jump over to Photopea and do it there really quick. Either way, it's fast and it's free. So, you know, I don't mind doing either one of those. Either way, I'm going to have to download my frame. And so, you know, again, people were all about making clipping masks on Canva, and now you can do it. Um, and it works really well for certain styles of designs, a little less well for others, but that's how you do it. If you have questions about that, drop it in the comments section below. I'll try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Um, by the way, I do read all the comments. Thank you so much for your kind words. They mean a lot. Again, I do have a new beginner course out on, um, on Etsy and it includes clickable links. And I have four, um, special videos that just show how to set up like an Etsy shop from scratch if you're brand new. So if you're new to print on demand and you're looking for a, a beginner's course, I recommend that. I also have it in book form on Amazon and I'll put the link in the um, description and the comments below this video. And because you guys were so patient and you did wait until the end of the video, I do have another five bonus niches for you guys. So without any more waiting, these are going to be your five bonus niches. So number one, I'm pregnant, not a petting zoo. Number two, actually, this is my circus and these are my monkeys. Number three, zookeeper. Number four, the zoo crew. And number five, I'm pretty sure my last words will be here, kitty, kitty. And it usually includes like a picture of a lion or a big cat. Um, so anyways, I'm sure you guys can find lots of fun ways to design for these. Again, I hope you guys are still growing your skills in your portfolio, putting up lots of new designs, and uh, I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.